Welcome to the Pod Doctors. I'm Dr. Damien Dauphiné, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Rafi Hussain. And we're going to talk about the dreaded plantar fibroma. It's not a tumor. Oh. Uh, it actually is uh, a tumor, uh, maybe benign, but I, uh, that, uh, you know, these things pop up. Uh, they can be part of palmar and plantar fibromatosis, where you have it on both. So if you'll get trigger finger, um, they can also get these on, on their, in their arch, uh, but they're painful when they're big enough. Uh, some people notice them and they come in and it's not a big deal cause it's the size of a pea. Yep. Um, but when they get big enough, they start putting pressure on sensory nerves and they become quite, quite tender. Yeah. It's like you're walking on a marble. A lot of times patients will come in and be like, I got this new bump in the bottom of my foot that I've noticed over the last few months. Uh, I'm concerned. Is it something I should be worried about? Well. You know, we'll we'll go through our exam, we'll go through our x-rays, we'll go through everything. But most of the times, these are just your classic plantar fibromas, which are just a benign fibrous tissue knot in the plantar fascia. And and we can't know absolutely whether or not these are benign or malignant unless we biopsy them. Yeah. But having said that, primary malignancies in the foot are very rare, and these are almost always a benign process. Yeah. So... That's just the caveat there. The The disclaimer is we can't know for sure unless we actually take some tissue, send it to pathology, let them study it. Yeah. Um, sometimes they'll have them bilaterally. Um, they're literally, like I said, a scar tissue knot. It could be due to overuse. It could be due to trauma. It could just be uh, genetics. Um, we don't really know exactly why they form, um, but we know what to, to, to treat them. Um, imaging. So a lot of patients are like, oh, can we get x-rays and see what's going on? We'll get x-rays, um, but it's a soft tissue pathology. And very rarely do you see it on x-rays unless it's like calcified or something extreme. Um, but 99% of the time, you're barely seeing a shadow on the x-rays. But we have ultrasound in office, in which most clinics do. We can get an ultrasound, see exactly what it is, and you'll see it in line with the plantar fascia. We'll do our full exam. And um, yeah, uh, they're usually benign. And if we need to, we can get more aggressive with treatments. But um, we start off with simple things. Um, oh, and if you don't have <laughs> ultrasound in your office, you can get MRIs and such also. Well, uh, you know, an MRI is nice to be able to, to study the, the density. To, you get a better idea of what it's made of. Uh, just make sure that it's not affecting bone. Yeah. Because the bone will light up. If this was some sort of invasive sarcoma, you know, you'd, you'd see it inv investing into the other tissue layers or into other tissues like bone and muscle. So this clearly is well encapsulated. It's pushing on those tissues, but it's not invested in those tissues. So yeah, generally that would be considered a benign process. Yeah. And, and the reason this is white and this is black is just based on the type of MRI we did yeah. here. Yeah. This is a, a T1. This is a T2. Right. So, so you're, you're blocking out the water content. Um, yeah, the fat, the fat is being blacked out. So then you're going to show, uh, inflammation better that way. All right. So simple treatments, right? Initially, we'll start off with pretty much kneading the area, um, on the patient's end. I'm not going to need the area for you. Um, you can do your hands, you can do your thumbs, you can use tools, spoons, the back of a wooden label. Um, you can use those massage guns. Some people like to do it on a golf ball, but the goal being that you're breaking down that fibrous tissue so the body can lay down new straight collagen. So it comes out nice and straight, um, and hopefully, uh, fades away into the background. Um, this is easier said than done because a lot of these do tend to be a little painful to push on there. Um, quite often we'll recommend simple stretching exercises also. Like I said, it's in line with your plantar fascia. So if your plantar fascia keeps on dropping, right, and you're putting micro tears in the um, the fascia bands, that can be one of the causes for getting that fibroma to form there. So the same stretches that you do for your plantar fasciitis, you can do for your plantar fibroma. So um, there's insoles, there's uh, night splints, there's heel rockers that you can use to help out with the stretching and support. So the plantar fascia aspect of this does not um, uh, play a part. As, uh, as far as your orthotics are concerned, sometimes it's difficult because it, it ends up putting pressure on the, yeah. on the lesion, which makes things worse. But you could do things like Clasizo, 
which yeah. is a soft drum that will mold around prominences, heat mold itself, just the, the daily wear of those can be helpful. So I've done that from time to time. Um, but yeah, just the regular polypropylene orthotics usually makes this worse. Yeah. They just, they have too much discomfort. All right. The stuff that we do on our end. So quite often we'll inject these, uh, steroids will help shrink these away. Um, the goal being that we're breaking down that fibrous tissue in there and you'll see, we'll typically pierce it a couple of times. We're not just dropping steroid around it. We're trying to pierce it, um, which will hopefully, uh, add to the breaking down of that fibrous tissue. We have the ultrasound in the office, so we do them ultrasound guided and, uh, we make sure that we hit that exactly. Um, the steroids, the, the doctors will use, um, is very user dependent. Typically in our office, we like to use dexamethasone and Kenalog 40. Um, it works well, the Kenalog, especially it's crystalline. We'll get into that, uh, fibroma and hopefully add to the breakdown process and it lasts longer too. And sometimes it takes a shot. Sometimes it takes a series. I don't know. What do you do? Three to five shots if needed. Yeah. I mean, I would do at least two if they wanted to go that route. Yeah. Um, you know, then there, you know, there are off label uses of the collagenases. I think you're going to get into. Yeah, right? exactly. So the Zyaflex stuff. So that stuff's really approved for the hand. Uh, none of these have been approved for the foot, but it's the same process. Um, so the that's an easy way for the insurers to not pay for it. it well, it's experimental at this point. Um, it These can work. And it, the downside is they're like two or $3,000. Uh, I don't know that they've come down in price tremendously uh, in the last year. It's probably the last time I actually looked at the price. but. Um, but they, they tend to price people out, uh, who want to use it off label. Uh, the topical verapamil, there's a pharmacy in San Antonio that has created a sort of a proprietary version of topical verapamil. It's calcium channel blocker. And the theory is that it'll, it'll help, uh, break down the fibroma and help it remodel. I've seen that work in some cases. Yeah. Has it been like this amazing go-to? No. No. Um, extracorporeal shockwave therapy. Another thing that they can help in some cases, I guess, uh, I haven't seen tremendous results with that. Yeah. Plus you have to invest in this giant machine yeah. that isn't covered by insurance yeah. and, um, yeah, it's a hit or miss. I, I think it works great for certain things. Um, but I don't have one. I couldn't tell you from personal use, um, according to literature, it works decent. I mean, you, and then, you know, excising you surgically, I mean, I think. That's you know, neat. We're surgeons. That's what we do for a living. Uh, I've had good success in removing these. Uh, sometimes you have to do that radical fascia fasciectomy where you're taking the, almost the entire plantar fascia out. Yeah. So this incision is much bigger than what you'll see Dr. D or I do. You'll see us cut it to the end roughly a little bit shorter than what the actual size of the mass is. And you just tent the skin and you take the samples. Now, the key thing is when we take these samples, we'll send them off for pathology. Um, and we'll label, you know, north, south, east, west, we do it with sutures and we'll send them off. God forbid this comes back as, um, something questionable. They'll let us know what margins are clean and which margins are dirty. So when we, you know, have to go back in or send them to oncology or wherever it might be, uh, they'll know, Hey, look, the proximal margin and the medial lateral border came back clean, but the distal margin came back questionable and it doesn't look like you excised the whole thing, whatever it might be. Um, so they can take over from there. They're not completely starting from scratch all over again. Thankfully, I've never had one of these. Yeah, knock on wood. They've always been benign plantar fibroma. That one in the middle looks really weird. I mean, that one, I would be worried about that one. Uh, I don't know about, uh, Dr. D, but I, I will put a graft over that area to prevent any adhesions or anything afterwards. So right underneath this layer is um your muscles and the last thing we want to do is cause that muscle to skin adhesion if you've seen anyone who've had really bad trauma or car accidents or anything like that fractures where the skin was compromised and then they get that adhesion of the skin so when they move their tissue you can see the skin move with them that's what we're trying to avoid yeah. so quite often i'll put a graft i'll use an umbilical cord or something along those lines and i'll literally just put some tiny tags in over the size of the wound i mean sorry it's the size of the fibroma that I excised, and then I'll just stitch it in, absorbable stitches, and then eventually um, it'll incorporate itself and hopefully 
Um, I totally agree. I, I do that as well. I think um, the benefits of the umbilical cord are, are unique, whether it's the dehydrated version or the Carl Preserve version. I, if I can use the Carl Preserve version, I like that better because it's got stem cells and um, lots of growth factors. But uh, I think covering the muscle layer where you got the nerves, and I know you're going to get into that. Oh, we got here after this. That fins yeah. So those you're exposing the medial lateral pyre nerve if you're doing a complete fasciotomy. A fasciectomy. So the tarsal tunnel here coming down to your toes. And it, if you imagine, if you're taking a fibroma along that medial band or that lateral band, you're exposing that nerve. You'll see the nerve. And I have had one or two patients who have had the fibromas excised and talk about that they still have nerve pain or whatever. Not from us, but yeah. from other so surgeons. bag the nerve. Yeah. And it's very easy to do because the nerve is literally on the other side. I'm literally uh, touching that fibroma. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's not a, it's not a benign um, process taking that fascia out. And it does have a, it does have a, a, have a purpose. I mean, it's a suspension bridge. So I would imagine that we, when you have to do a radical fasciectomy, you're probably putting those people in orthotics. Oh, yeah. So the, I think the goal would be you need to start to think about the biomechanical repercussions of taking that structure out. There are certainly uh, biomechanical repercussions. And you can jump all over that by getting people into custom orthotics. Now that the fibroma is gone, they got to tolerate those better once the incision heals. Yeah. The incision, that's another point. Yeah. The incisions on the bottom of your foot. So we really have to be careful on our closure. Uh, we don't want to put anything aggressive. Um, stitches, you'll see that we'll put smaller stitches, but a lot more because we really want that edge to edge uh, healing so you don't get a uh, hypertrophic scar or keloid. But how said, that? Guy, the, the thick skin on the bottom of the foot heals beautifully. It does. If you put it together correctly, it heals great. You could barely even find these scars. I like that big lazy S. Lazy S style? Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah. You... I try to trace some of the um, uh, the skin lines in the foot. You know, I can get the, the lines here. I'd still be lazy. I'll, 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 I'll highlight them no matter what you do. Yeah, I don't do straight incisions yeah. along the bottom of the foot because you're asking for a, a thicker scar. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. But yeah, uh, these if you do them right, they heal up. And I know some people are like, oh, a scar on the bottom of the foot. Uh, we really try to avoid it, which is true. Um, but if you do them right, They'll heal up and, and hopefully we're leading this particular star in the arch between the heel, weight bearing heel and weight bearing ball of the foot. So yeah, you're, you're typically going to be able to ambulate without putting direct pressure on that scar unless you have a decrepit yeah. flat foot. Recovery, you're pro doctor. You'll be partial weight bearing, completely weight uh, off weight bearing for the first few weeks. Once that incision heals, then you're back to normal. I typically say a week to three weeks, you're just doing protective weight bearing to my patients. Um, depends on, you know, how big the incision has to be also and the, and the, uh, um, the gravity of it all. I, I'm keeping them off of it for probably three to five days with crutches or a knee scooter. Yeah. And then once you've given the skin kind of a head start, then they can start being a little more uh, weight bearing on it. But yeah, this, this, these typically heal up, heal up great. That's pretty much it. So the, I think the the catch all pecom is that these are a benign process. Yes, they're very common. They can be more common in patients who have already had problems with trigger finger. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you can get palmar plantar fibrobatosis. We don't exactly know why they show up. Um, they can be addressed in some cases with conservative non-surgical care. Um, but when they're when they're big enough, uh, you, you generally just need to remove them surgically. Yeah. And it's a very in and out date procedure. Yep. Awesome. Well, that was a great complete discussion of the notorious plantar fibroma. And if you have any questions or you guys want us to d dig a little deeper in plantar fibromas um, or other soft tissue lesions like that, then shoot us a note and we'll we'll go after those as well. Um, thanks, Dr. Hussein, for putting that together. That was a great job. And we will see you guys next time on The Pod Doctors.